We digitize uh, library special collections and faculty material and material from community. And our goal is always to make this material publicly accessible. The construction of the digitization center um, and its staffing, so the development of the center, is directly tied to the library's um, 2010 to 2015 strategic plan. And so one of the goals of the strategic plan is to create a comprehensive digitization program to provide unlimited online access to materials of research and teaching value. So some of our funded projects are initiated externally. Um, we're digitizing a large archival phone right now for a group of scholars from the University of Tokyo. There's donor-funded projects that are initiated by us. So one recent example of that is Chinese Canadian Stories. So we created a portal to bring together material about Chinese Canadians. So that's material from our special collections. And then some of it was contributed by our community partners. So we have this form that we ask people to fill in, but accompanying that we also have a digital collection policy. So it guides our decision making and taking on new projects. And it's also available on our website under the documentation area. And so it asks questions like, are there possibilities for creating partnerships and collaborations that could come out of this project? Um, does the material support the teaching and research that goes on at UBC? And is there a possibility of obtaining funding? and then we sit down with the team in the digitization center. And as I mentioned, anyone is welcome to propose a project, but it's a good idea to come and talk to us first. So many of you might wonder why we have so many scanning devices here. And a lot of them are unlike the ones you have at home, which are just your regular eight and a half by 11 scanners. Well, a lot of the materials we have are quite large, as the one I'm holding right here. So with our 54 inch wide scanner, we can scan material like this at very high resolutions and then derive as many types as we want from that. So this is an example of how we scan uh, something that's large format. So we feed it into the scanner like this. The scanner pulls it in and we're scanning this at 400 pixels per inch. So the resolution is quite high and we'll be able to use this comfortably for a variety of purposes. So sometimes we have to work with pieces of material that are very fragile. We would normally, if this were in good shape, use our uh, sheet-fed scanner. But in this case, we're going to use what we call the TTI. So what we'll do here is put the artwork on this table. And the first thing that has to happen is we need to position the artwork so that is, it's in the frame of the camera, it's properly squared up. Um, then we'll, what we'll do is we'll go through a focusing procedure. We'll uh, neutralize for white and gray balance. So what we want to make sure is the exposure values here are within a certain range. And in playing around with the exposure time of the camera, as well as some exposure compensation, we can move these values into the area that we want. Uh, and then, uh, once everything is ready, we'll actually take our shot. Now, once the shot is captured, it goes on to what's called a contact sheet. So this would be the, the point at which you would start to kind of examine it, make sure that things look the way you want. So oftentimes we have to scan things that are rare, and this is an example of that right here, a rare book, uh, and we have to take the greatest possible care with them. And so when we do that, we use the machine behind me right here, the ATs. Um, so it's quite simple. Um, the way it works is there's a pair of cameras up here at the top, and they shoot one page each respectively in sequence. So we'll go ahead and put the book here on the cradle, lower the platen, and then we go ahead and fire off the cameras and they capture a page left and then right. So what we'll do with this later is to crop it and you know work with the color balance, brightness, contrast and things like that. And so essentially the procedure is to turn a page and to continue to capture. Once we've digitized material, we go ahead and do some post-processing on it. Um, that often involves fixing things like the color balance, uh, cropping it, rotating it, uh, making sure the brightness and contrast are good so that the final product is appropriate again for uh, public consumption. So that's you know uploading to the web, printing, etc. We usually use Photoshop to do that and uh, we have, it's often a multi-step process but uh, we can also often automate that to make it a bit quicker once we've got our initial parameters. 
parameters. Once we've digitized our material, we add it to our digital content management system, which is called ContentDM. It's produced by OCLC. And what that involves is adding the digital objects and the metadata together to create a record for that object. And we do that over and over again. If there's one object, we do it once. If there's a thousand, we do it a thousand times. And then that's uploaded to our digital content management system. It's approved, indexed, and then made available for public consumption. Once the items are in our digital content management system, you can go ahead and find them on our website at digitalcollections.library.ubc.ca or through the library homepage, which has federated search, and you'll find our objects there as well. And you know, searching is quite straightforward, mainly by keyword and by subject. And uh, most of our images are fairly high resolution, so you should really enjoy them. The Digitization Center has been open for about a year, so we've had that long to think about our workflows and our procedures, and now we're starting to think more about our future plans. So that includes we would like to work more closely with, uh, to get more projects submitted by faculty, and to work more closely with our liaison librarians to get the material out to students and faculty so that it's being used. Um, we've started a blog that's available on our website and we're also really trying to keep a list of our current projects so that people know that what we're working on and so that we can share what we're excited about.